For members of dozens of Native American nations along the Mexican and Canadian borders, crossing tribal lands to go to meetings, ceremonies, or just to visit family means crossing an international border, and that can mean time-consuming delays. Now officials from the Pasquayaki tribe in Arizona have drafted what would be the first border crossing procedures specifically for a Native American nation. And if adopted by the Department of Homeland Security, the rules could provide a roadmap for other tribes. Hallie Golden has been reporting on this issue for the Associated Press. And Christina Lessa is an associate professor of anthropology and indigenous studies at Colorado College. She focuses on U.S.-Mexico border issues. Uh, Christina, I want to start with you. What, what, how disruptive is this to routine life on these, uh, on these tribal lands? It's very difficult for... Uh... A number of the uh, federally recognized tribes, as well as other communities that aren't recognized along the U.S.-Mexico border, and actually being able to maintain an ongoing traditional relationship with community members that are residing on both sides of the border. Uh, so for the Yaqui in particular, um, there are certain ceremonies, uh, traditional ceremonies that can't happen um, actually on the U.S. side of the border without uh, a relationship with and assistance uh, from community members on the Mexican side of the border. So uh, being able to easily bring across a ceremonial uh, performers, uh, community members, um, traditional healers uh, into the U.S. Um, in order to actually be able to uh, practice these ceremonies is really significant. Um, and in terms of delays, uh, it, it may sound like we're only talking about an inconvenience, uh, but oftentimes because of the process, the traditional process that's involved in the ceremonies, uh, significant delays um, or even uh, the inability uh, uh, sometimes to bring someone across into the U.S. for a ceremonial uh, activity uh, can mean that the ceremony simply can't happen or that the um, significance of the ceremony, the power of the ceremony is, is taken away. So we're really seeing an imposition on the spiritual and religious, religious rights of these uh, communities. And Hallie, sort of the broad brush, what, tell us about the guidelines that they've come up with and they're trying to uh, get uh, DHS to go along with. Yeah, so um, the specifics haven't been uh, nailed down yet, but overall, um, one of the main things is trying to get some training in there um, for the border agents on the tribe's culture, their language, their traditions, just um, things to really help with what has been described as a lack of cultural awareness. Um, another big one is having... Um, for this particular tribe, um, a Yaqui interpreter. And then overall, just really having more close coordination um, between uh, the border and the tribes to really expedite this process and, and make it as, as easy as possible for everyone. And Hallie, what is the current state of negotiations with the uh, DHS? I know that um, the Pasca uh, Yaqui tribe has met with the DHS secretary, and they've talked about this as far as I know, but I think, you know, there's still a ways to go. Christina, to what extent is this a, an issue uh, for the Native Americans of, of sovereignty, sovereignty for their tribal nations? When we talk about the ways in which U.S.-Mexico border affects uh, these tribal nations along the southern border, uh, what we're talking about is, is uh, an imposition, really, for the most part, on, on the federal government upon these tribal nations and deciding it, what should be done on their own tribal lands, um, what should be done in terms of policy making in regards to the movement of their peoples across their own traditional territories. And I think tribal nations certainly agree um, that our territory territories need to be protected, um, but they need to be trusted as tribal nations, as sovereign nations, to be able to make decisions about how to best protect their territories. And at the moment, uh, because so much um, decision-making is held in the hands of the federal government, and there are no clear procedures set out um, that ensures that the rights of tribal nations will be protected, um, it really seems uh, that the sovereignty of tribal nations um, is really not being respected and is uh, under threat um, if, if tribal nations don't have a clear say in the ways in which these policies and, and procedures are developed and shared. And, uh, Christina, do the members of the, the, these tribal nations have the same problems on the Mexican side? 
So on the Mexican side, um, certainly there is also a concern about uh, policy and procedure regarding uh, movement of peoples across the border. Um, but I would say that most of the concern is coming from the U.S. side in terms of the various fears uh, that exist on the U.S. side about movements from the south into U.S. territories. But certainly um, populations, indigenous populations, both in Mexico and the U.S. US, um, are uh, deeply impacted uh, by the current policies that exist at the border. And Hallie, is there a chance or a possibility that this could all get caught up in the politics of border security and immigration? It's really hard to know what could happen here. Um, you know, this is this is not just a, a policy for for one particular tribe. It would it could potentially use be used as a template for dozens of others. So it would be a big decision for sure. Hallie Golden of the Associated Press and Christina Lessa from Colorado College. Thank you both very much. Thank you. Thank you.